Hawaii is known as the epicenter of the Aloha spirit. People are filled with Aloha. But what is Aloha? To the tourist, the traveler, Aloha is a salutation. It's so much deeper than that. Aloha is endangered because it became overused. It didn't have the depth of meaning that is associated with it. We need to find the true Aloha again. Oluwalo is one of the last undeveloped alluvial floodplains in the state of Hawaii. So the Oluwalo Cultural Reserve was created for those families that still have a lineal descendancy and have a claim to these spaces. My name is Ikolo Lindsay, and my family has generational roots here on Maui, specifically on West Maui. The true meaning of Aloha is when you start volunteering your time in places like these. So this is the hardening station. A lot of these plants here are going to be planted in Lahaina Town. After the cleanup is done and people are ready to put plants in the ground, they're able to come and get these for free. We have a beautiful canopy coverage. This is called the milo. This turns into a big tree. At Kipuko Oluwalu, we remove invasive species along a riparian corridor to stabilize the Hawaiian biocultural resources. This is the Willy Willy. And it's really easy to remember the name because it's a really, really cool name. It's a really, really awesome plant. Now, when you look at these plants, there's a connectivity between the indigenous plants and something in the ocean. The protectors are on land that protect something in the ocean. According to Okumulipo, life began in the ocean. It is important for the traveler to understand malama. Malama is to take care of, to cherish, to take care of things properly. Take care of the plants, take care of the land, take care of the people. We are here to protect, preserve, and rejuvenate these spaces, as well as share it out with whoever wants to come. Our volunteer days is open to the public. By volunteering, you're tapping into information and experiences that you have not had yet. It may open your mind to a passion that is unexplored. We'd love for tourists to come, have fun, and spend money, and support the local economy. Stay at the resorts that can accommodate and have the infrastructure for you. Tourism today directly employ about 20,000 people. However, when you look at the overall percentage and the industries that it touches, it's about 75% of our employees in the islands. My name is Lisa Paulson. I'm a 30-year resident, and I have background in nonprofit management, currently the director of Maui Hotel and Lodging Association. The tourism industry generates revenue in many different ways, and one of the biggest revenue generators is the transient accommodation tax, and that goes into providing services. And so those tourism dollars are going back into our daily lives here in Maui County and in the state. We see about 75% of our short-term vacation rentals owned by people who don't even live here in the islands. So as an industry, we're in favor of the ones that are in the resort designated areas, adhering to all the laws, ADA compliance, and safety issues. So when we look back in some of the ways that we used to entice our visitors, it was very inappropriate. We were telling the story of the culture in not the most beautiful way that it is truly represented. The all-you-can-eat buffet, the luau. There's so much more to the culture and the history here that is being opened up by all of these properties that we're so excited to see. 
So we're here in Hale Kukuna, which is our cultural center here at Fairmont Kialani, just off of our lobby. The purpose and intent of this space is to invoke education and knowledge through Hawaiian culture. My name is Kamahiva Kava'ai, and I'm the manager of Hawaiian culture here at Fairmont Kialani. As we go further into the space is our lei hulu, or our feather lei. Our feather lei are very detailed, very beautiful, with vibrant colors. Traditionally, they would have been made with native birds, feathers. Using feathers is traditional, so feather lei is something that was found pre-Western contacts, and it was a status of your rank within society. Another key element that we have here is this statue here. This is Queen Liliuokalani, who was the last reigning monarch of the Kingdom of Hawaii. She was an exemplary model of being Hawaiian and being proud to be Hawaiian. There was a period of time in Hawaii, the Hawaiian language was banned, hula was banned, Hawaiian arts and crafts was banned. And it's a very sad time within our culture. So we bring her here with the hope that Hawaiian culture through Hale Kukuna and the things that we offer and do in here by educating our guests, educating our community and our colleagues can help to ensure that Hawaiian culture is re-energized and will continue for many generations to come. More managed tourism or educated visitor, we would love to see them come and actually even give back while they're here. Go plant in the lo'i, go volunteer, go help eradicate non-Indigenous plants. It's an amazing act while you're here and you get to learn so much about where you've been and you carry that in your heart forever. My name is Vene. I'm a descendant of the island called Maui Nui or Maui the Great. Well, welcome to Koiei Lokoia. And it is a royal fish pond belonging to our ali'i, our royalty. It was built by 10,000 Hawaiian men and hand carried the stones that you guys see outside here. So these guys are gonna stack on the outside. The flatter ones more towards the top, the big, big ones on the bottom. Fish ponds were things that beautified the land. The more fish ponds you had, the wealthier you were considered. When you guys come to Hawaii, you know, you feel like you've contributed and not just taken. When we go to a place as Hawaiians, we wanna give. And the greatest gift you can give a place like this, I think, is your commitment commitment to, to helping us guys care for this place as stewards of the land, as stewards of the planet, wherever you may be. And you take this mana, this energy that you have from doing this back to your family, back to your community. And then we're building the bridge of Aloha. It is so pretty. Love this farm. This place is awesome. Wow, look at this guy. Ready to go. My name's Yeshua, born and raised here in Hawaii. We're at Moon and Salt Farm up in Olinda, Maui. Just here in the garden, gathering some items for tonight's feast. Gonna prepare a few things over the fire. I grew up here in Maui, I grew up wild. I always say jumping off waterfalls, surfing big waves hunting, fishing. We named our business Kiave Outdoor. Uh, Kiave is our invasive mesquite, and we found our mission is to educate people on the issues of the invasives here, to utilize them. They are absolutely delicious. It's a great hardwood to cook over. It's one of the many facets of who we are and our identity. We are so much about the table, bringing people around to feast well, create these magical experiences. But to also say, hey, while you're here, let's, uh, let's teach you about how special this place is and how we can keep it that way. Today we're gonna do a little poke. Poke was just about, you have this amazing fresh fish that you went out and caught, and you just wanna serve it in the most authentic way. And Native Hawaiians had kukui nut, sea salt, and then seaweed. So talking about some of our invasive species, the axis deer were originally brought here as a gift, and 12 deer were dropped off in Kihei. Now we have over 100,000. They are vastly overpopulated. They need to be managed. So here at Kiave Outdoor, we love to serve the venison and educate people on the invasive issues that they present. And uh, they are delicious as well. A lot of what I get to do as a business owner is incorporating the history of fashion into what we do. A lot of my inspiration comes from Maui itself, comes from 
Hawaiian heritage that I have and from the Aina around us. This style with the ruffled collar, which is like one of our signature looks that we have. Hawaiian culture inspires really everything that we do. We always think about honoring places, honoring elements of those places, and then how we can really be one with that place. The top three things visitors should do volunteer your time, stay at the resorts, be courteous. What happens is when people come and they participate in these activities, doing restoration work, there's a shift. We call it mana. They, um, it, it, it changes them. <laughs> like, like you've seen today, um, the, the guys, they just get, you can you see how they feel towards the planet, how they feel towards each other. It's, it's something bigger than them that they realize that we're all a part of. Aloha is the spirit of being kind, being respectful, being welcoming, being hospitable to everybody and anybody, no matter their background, no matter their circumstances. And Hawaiians have embodied that for generations. And I always get emotional when I talk about this, but my biggest goal is that I'm making my kupuna, my ancestors, proud. Um, they come from the generation where they were beaten for speaking Hawaiian. They were imprisoned for practicing Hawaiian cultures and practices. It's my goal, my hope, that I can awamo that koleana, fulfill that responsibility, so that my future generations of ohana family um, can know who they are and be true to who they are as Hawaiians. The visitors, the travelers that come, are people that are already open to these concepts of aloha. When you can practice aloha, the doors open wide for you and you will be accepted as family.